Larry Singer of the acting studios in Tribeca that bear his name is a teacher and heads a quote community of working actors and those committed to promoting professional careers end quote. As actor, Larry made his Broadway debut in the comedy Gemini. He directed Outside Sitka this year and also recently Josh Billig's Franklin. Just recently, he was named Backstage Magazine's Best Scene Study and Acting Teacher in New York City, where there are a good many acting teachers and coaches to be conservative. Larry, welcome to Breaking Through. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Uh, Larry, some would note that the process of becoming an actor on the level of self-expression is a never-ending succession of breakthroughs. Your comments apropos the title of this show? Yeah, I, I think that's, uh, that's, we use that term a great deal, as a matter of fact, in class. This, this was a breakthrough for you. So the, it's, it really comes down to the evolution of the actor and their understanding of their artistry and their capacity to constantly move to a different level of expertise, technically, and truth-telling. So those, those things do bring about constant breakthroughs, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, where was the earliest support of your decision to work in the theater? Thanks for asking that question. Um, my, my family. Uh, my father was a teacher, and uh, my, he, his hobby was film. And my mother was a social worker, and uh, she loved people. So those things came together. Larry, I know in this world, you've got a lot of parents telling their kids to go choose a profession where they can actually earn a living. Yeah. Um, but I want to find out, like, where was the earliest support of the decision that you made to work in the theater? Yeah. Uh, Someone supported you, and that yes, doesn't well, happen often. It, I think um, who comes to mind first of all is my father. I, he was very concerned about me making sure I had a profession that I could make a living. But when I was in high school, I did a performance, and I remember very clearly coming home that night and him saying, go ahead and be an actor. And, and that gave me the confidence I needed to go forward. Larry, you know, why theater? Some see it as unmitigated narcissism, egotism that creates Brangelinas and other has-beens out of perfectly good human beings. Mm. Why theater? Well, I think for every time that maybe you have that kind of situation, you do have some people who are, through their art, they're evolving as people. So one would hope that even though narcissism can lead to destruction, that perhaps the opposite of it. And I, I do think that the, the modern actor is beginning to understand that, and, and they're beginning to see that if they involve themselves in some kind of altruistic practice, it helps get them out of that tendency to get caught up in the self-centered world that they can find themselves in, in, in the theater and in acting in general. So, yeah. You actually, by, by your saying that, you had me kind of, I'm, I'm thinking about kind of adoption in the third world, which mm -hmm. seems to be an expression of altruism on the part of, you know, Brangelina, sure. Madonna, others, yeah. where it seems like the thing to do. Are they doing this because it's a good cause to do in the world, or are they doing it for the effect of it? In other words, it's, it's good for my image. I, 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 I couldn't be certain of their motivation. I mean, perhaps looking at Clooney and his, his desire to, you know, have a satellite in the sky so that if there is a civil war that it can be viewed in Africa. That, oh, I, think okay. I had no so, idea he was doing so that. I think, I think that they recognize that it probably is good for publicity, but I think they're also doing it because it helps them get out of what they probably do sense, and they've seen it in generations before them, of the self-destruction that happens if they stay self-involved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it probably helps with a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> the company fly, okay? okay, okay just treat them well, okay? Yeah, I will. I will. Um, so, you, so you actually think that they've learned, actually, by watching yeah. the, maybe the stars of yesteryear, what can become of these people, unless they really connect themselves up with altruism, with good causes in the world. I, I, you I, think they really get that? I, I, think, I think a lot of them do. Okay. I, and I have the pleasure sometimes of, of teaching co uh, college students. They're very aware now that perhaps their parents before them, because of they were members of a me generation, have not left the world quite the way they would like it to be, and they're seeing that they need to give up those concerns and care about one another if they're going to you know, have, have a place to live, literally, you know, in the world. So uh, 
I, I think there is a balance that's that's occurring. Yes. Mm. Yes. Actually, it's a perfect segue point into the next question. Uh, you are a I, I call I call them Broadway Buddhists. You know, as was another recent guest of mine, uh, Tamara Jenkins, artistic director of Harbor Lights Theater Company. I know, Tamara. I know her. You do I know do, her. Yes. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, she yeah. was, yes, she was on the show. Uh, you know, what's the connection, if any, between your Buddhist philosophy and doing what you apparently do as well or better than anyone, namely teaching acting? Well, thank you. Um, I, I think I think one of the things that uh, uh, I really have to thank what I've learned through Buddhism is that there is this concept in Buddhism that everyone has within them this tremendous potential. So I, I, I think when I first started teaching acting, I was very young and, and new to Buddhism. I didn't really, I, I would judge people, oh, this person. Now, I, I don't want to misspeak. There are people who clearly have talent and, and others who struggle. But still, to teach them well, to recognize that everyone has that within them, it, it, it gives me the opportunity to respect them more. I think they sense it and then they become you know, more confident and then the trust builds and we can have a good relationship and I can, I can help them more that way. Mm. So you're really talking about their capacity to communicate as actors, a, a, a talent? Is that what you're talking about? You used to be judgmental about the ones who didn't have the talent that measured up in the way that you would like them to measure up at that point? Yeah, or they thought they didn't have the flair or something. And then, But if, if you give them the opportunity, then something good starts to come out of them. Now, and I, I want to repeat. There are, there are definitely people that have an advantage. They, they're born with a better voice, or they just are more outward, you know, they, they, they like expressing themselves. And there's, there's different cases, but, but there's, some, there's some real gems, and if you give them a chance, it's some amazing things happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've, I've heard it said that some of the most demonstrative and outgoing actors are some of the shyest and introspective people one could ever not meet because you, you'd never meet them. <laughs> if they weren't for their celebrity, yeah. they wouldn't even be available for a conversation. Can you, can you bear that out? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've seen that. I've seen where there, there's some actors who, um, they, they just takes them a long time to feel comfortable in their own skin. They're, they're, it, for some reason, that's there. Uh, but then the opportunity to delve and, and honestly to just commit themselves to work seems to bring something out of them, and, and, and they love it. They love it, and yeah, so that does happen. Mm -hmm. It does happen. Mm -hmm. And there are extroverts who are extroverts, mm -hmm. and that comes through too, so, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I've heard it actually described as kind of giving oneself permission, the person who doesn't give themselves permission, like in the daily walk of life, to be outgoing or expressive, that suddenly they're standing on a stage where the camera's rolling, okay, I can be another person. I don't have to be the same, the same old person, that, this boring person that I am in real life. I can be somebody else right now. Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, this is just... Is that essence. healthy? <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I, I think there's, like, there, there's one actor I, I knew, and, and, and she said she started acting in high school because it's the only way she thought she could get a boy to kiss her. And then she got kissed, and then she... Yeah, a stage, that, that, like a stage was, kiss. A stage or, kiss, and then that was enough to propel her into actually being... Uh, an Academy Award nominated multi, multi times actor. And yeah, so yeah, you hear stories. I think maybe one out of every three has a moment where they, they weren't planning on it, but then they discovered it. Huh. Yeah. So it's kind of the, your, your motivation to do it may be very different from someone else's. It's not really, it's not really what, what brings you into it, but that you get into it. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that is fair to say. And actors are like fingerprints and snowflakes. I mean, there's no two that are alike. You can't, you can't say there's this kind and that kind because there's so many kinds. But yeah, yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. your statement is very fair. You know, that, what you just described is a very, very freeing way as a, as a, as a director or as, an, as, a, as a teacher of actors. That's a very freeing uh, message to give an actor because there are a whole lot of actors as I, I mentioned to you before I, I spent some time in management of actors oh, and also as an actor I was an actor briefly myself but I, I always had this idea of, of being too short or they're actors that didn't look right they didn't have that kind of million dollar smile that you wanted and some actors were a whole lot easier to book than others yeah. because they weren't really commercial or good-looking and I'll give you an example right here Fisher Stevens we talked right. briefly about right. 
was was one uh, person that I was managing when he was about 15 years old, and I could not book him. Uh, I had, there were other actors that we had of his same age group that we were booking all the time, mm -hmm. but it was very difficult to book him because he didn't have that kind of conventional kind of look. Or right. He actually ended up finding so much of his own work, like the actor's studio. Here he was, yeah. a 15-year-old kid walking in and, and finding plays to be in at the actor's studio. He was like yeah. incredibly... Um, industrious. What's the point I'm making? It's the well, point. The point is that you're giving them a message that you know you can be any kind of a person yeah. and still become a great actor. Well, if I can maybe just put a tag on that, I would have trouble thinking of another actor like him, and I think that's to his credit. He decided, well, I am who I am, and mm -hmm. and that's what you're going to get. And you know, you you did mention to me. I think he overcame a very severe illness as a young person. I think he had leukemia or something and like he, that. You know, yeah. that's the kind of he, life changing he was close moment to dying, yeah. where someone says, "Well, you know, I am who I am. I can't try to be somebody else, and I don't want to be." And there's a lot of actors like that that they don't fit a prototype or or a type. And but because they invest in who and what they are and share that, then some very good things start to happen. Yeah, so true. And actually, as an educator, which mm -hmm. I am, you know, mm -hmm. equally, uh, I would say that great teachers are more themselves than like anyone else. That they're more themselves. They become more themselves. Oh, yeah. A great teacher is someone who's just really kind of like at home within his own, his or her own skin, yeah. you know, and can communicate something. Not, in other words, not, not all teachers are like cut from the same cloth or I, from the same mold. I think so. I think there's something about about the the most challenging thing as a teacher is every once in a while you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to have to extend myself. When you do that for the sake of somebody else then you do learn more about yourself and then yes your your understanding of who and what you are does develop mm -hmm. yes let's look for a moment at the process of teaching okay. are you setting free something already extant within a student or are you paving entirely new roadways in the actor oh. whom you coach you know i or the I combination think, that's I, think I would have to say both a little yeah, bit I, I think so i think you know there's there, there's so many different ways to train an actor, and some of them have proven to be very reliable, but not every actor takes to those ways. Sometimes they take to another way. So you both want to point out to them, you know you do this, and do you know you do this? And you need to own it, because it's good, but I'm afraid you don't own it, so let's make sure you do. And then sometimes you have to say, you know, you hit a wall here. You're just you're really good with this kind of material, but not this kind of material. So we're going to have to we're going to have to teach you different ways of working now, so that you have access to that. So I think I think good actors, when they're growing, find excitement in in having both those wheels moving. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's what I think. Yeah. And and clearly, um, from the way you're you're talking about this now, you're able to establish trust with the actors that you work with. I mean, there are many, I mean, there's a, there's a multiplicity of personalities yeah. that one can have, and I would just, I'm just, my observation of your personality is that you would actually put someone at ease and allow them wow. to, to, to comfortably take on something different or something new. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I'm, I'm really, thank you for saying that. Because <laughs> it's honestly, obvious. I don't well, think it's, well, it's maybe, not rocket science. It's, yeah, well, maybe, it's, but clearly. it's the kind of thing where that's where I feel I have to constantly, what I constantly have to work on is trust. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, some may, maybe, I, I point out to my students sometimes that the thing that maybe you think you're weak at, if you focus on it, it can become your strength. So maybe I've been I've done that because mm -hmm. I find that the most difficult thing. It is. It's very challenging. Who wants to get out of their comfort zone? When something's worked for you, why would you want to try something that's oh, uncomfortable? Why? No. Because yeah. that's where the breakthrough is. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and that's yeah, you know, it's like splitting the atom, the energy that's released by oh, by that. That's that's a wonderful. I'm, I'm wonderful offering analogy. that as a suggestion. No, it's a great analogy, yeah. and I think it's, I think it's true. And it's hard to split an atom. It, it, it's it's hard to get trust. Actually, you want it, since you're talking about stuff, it's hard. Let me throw this in here. So there's a wonderful educationalist. His name is Daisaku Ikeda. He's a Buddhist, and that's how I learned about him. He said that. Becoming an artist is more difficult than opening a heavy metal inner door. And that to do so is, is harder than solving the scientific challenges in, in that reach out into space. And that seems, whenever I say that, people are moved. It is hard to grow. It's hard to be a real human being. Yeah, and, and setting yeah. free the human spirit. That's it what you're talking about, aren't really you? It's really hard, and it, the will it That's takes the to do it yourself is so challenging. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you say that there's a particular school of acting that you subscribe to, or or not? I, I, I don't I don't think so. I, I don't I don't think so. I, I think because the generation of teachers before me, they 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 really were committed to a certain orthodoxy, each of them. And, and now it is becoming clear, as, as I referenced before, that different things work for different people. Some things that really worked, interestingly, two generations ago, because of culture and stuff, they don't work so good anymore. And there's some things that really work great for certain kinds of scripts. So you, you, have, to, you have to keep things moving around in terms of your approach. I, I do think of myself as someone who loves Stanislavski and, and that approach, but I don't see myself as you know, a strict mm -hmm. method, mm -hmm. actor, teacher, mm -hmm. So you'll incorporate uh, aspects or elements of different schools yeah. into your teaching. Yeah. Because you may, you may come by a, a student that you're coaching or teaching who's been brought up in one school of acting, yes. and I suppose you have to be able to adjust and adapt to that too because that's the way, that's the model they're working from. That, that's absolutely right. And, and the one common thread is that actors like it when they can think of more questions to ask about their character. That, the more questions that you can raise, then they start to, the little lights go on, and they start to feel comfortable more about what's going on. That, that seems to be the common thread. Mm. It's kind of Socratic, isn't it? It is. Uh -huh. That's a perfect description, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And, and in your, you're actually the trusted external eyes and ears and senses of that, of that actor. Right. That, that you're, you're observing things about them That's right. and they're trusting you in that relationship to, to, to advise them in order to, to do something, to tweak something in order to transcend perhaps the limitation that they've been living that's, under without that, even being aware of it. That's right. It, sometimes you say something and they go, oh, that's right, I know that. Mm -hmm. But somehow it got lost mm -hmm. as being in the, the front of their thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or maybe kind of like what you just did with me a little bit. You said, well, it seems like you're good at developing trust. And I guess I am, I thought. Mm -hmm. and, and, but I work hard at it, so to get some kind of, you know, some kind of feedback about it is really helpful. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess the, this whole electronic revolution that's going on in our midst with, you know, with movie cameras and, and on telephones and every kid having access to something, and I mentioned to you earlier, kind of the, the, my anecdote, where as a kid I wanted to take pictures, but it was so expensive to shoot in film. Nowadays, you know, you, you're able to shoot, uh, you know, endlessly, but yeah. doesn't that kind of diminish its impact or its value in a sense? I, 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 I'm, I'm going to think that there's always been um, product, if you will, or create creativity that falls short, and then there's some that it exceeds our expectations. So. It, it probably, the fact that there is more access will have a negative effect, but also it, it can give one person an opportunity to change everybody else's point of view. Mm. So, that positive. So that's a positive, actually, the fact that yeah. there'll be so many more that'll have access to it than, 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 than ever did before, because virtually every kid who has a cell phone has access to the means of making films. That's right. I, I, I think that will happen, and I, I, think, I think it's going to be good for actors now. Actually, I think the only problem for actors is I think frequently they'll find themselves auditioning without having to meet anybody. They're probably going to send their audition in via Skype mm -hmm. or, you mm -hmm. know, on a... Yeah, yeah, like from the comfort of your own living room. That's right. Skype. That's True. Right. That's right. I know a lot of voiceover actors, they just... Uh, one guy remodeled the closet and he went in, he goes in there and they do it over the phone. He doesn't have to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. and so things are changing mm -hmm. quite a bit. And also the unions are probably going to merge soon, and uh, who knows what kind of influence that will have. I mean, after a SAG, um, those two even especially. The, those yeah. two especially. Yeah, yeah. They, they've been in talks for a while, and uh -huh. that could change the actor's life quite a bit. Too. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. let, let's, let's talk a bit about the kind of this whole the phenomenon of the storyteller, which is mm -hmm. part of culture's immemorial. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go back thousands, millions of years, you've got human beings telling stories kind of giving the news or the, yeah. the, the chase, the, the hunt of the antelope or whatever they're into yeah. that particular day, cave drawings, you know, like that, that sort of thing. Um, uh, can give us some context in terms of act, the acting, the part of acting and storytelling that you're involved with today. Is it the same, is it the same dynamic I, I think it's as 10 million years ago? I, I think it's fascinating <laughs> you ask that question because, because sometimes actors will just cut off, get caught up in, okay, is this real, is this real? And then when you remind them, well, wait a minute, there's, what's the story to be told? 
you can see a new vigor come over them and an excitement, or sometimes confusion, of course. But when they're reminded of that, then I think they improve quite a bit. And so that's, that's needed. And I've had the experience as an actor where um, I couldn't figure out what the story was, and then all of a sudden when the audience finally came, a few lights went on for me and I understood parts that were missing mm -hmm. because the storytelling came in there. So mm -hmm. it's always going to be mm -hmm. there, it has to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Why do we need to have storytellers? Uh, that helps us understand more about the nature of our humanity, I think. And that's ultimately what a good theater actor will be, is someone who's sharing the humanity of, of the world. Mm -hmm. And when they can expose that, reveal that, mm -hmm. then you've got somebody who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Is that what makes the great actors, the ones that, that kind of roll off the tip of our tongue, like the Pacinos and the Brandos and the Deans and, and like this, and, and, and many others, but the ones yes. that, that they've captured that, that, can, that hu hu humanistic connection? Absolutely. Is that what that is? Yes. I, I, you couldn't have put it better. I just want to... Um, for fairness sake, throw in maybe the, the name Meryl Streep, put oh, a woman's name in there too. Please but, throw it in yeah, there. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I think so. And I, I think, um, you know, there, there's this famous phrase that talent is in the choice. And what that really means is who you are is really revealed when you decide what the most human element or elements of your character is. Some things are overlooked, and then every once in a while you can get a better sense of it. And that's when an actor, I think, is really working at their best. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that term, like making a choice, and uh, knowing one's motivation, it's, it's often, I mean, it's used to kind of mock, you know, I mean, like in skits yeah. that are done on Saturday Night Live. Yes. It wasn't my motivation, yes. that sort of thing, but yes. it, and it's something I've always struggled with, kind of that understanding of how do people know their motivation. It seems like it could be very abstract, and you mm -hmm. could never really get it. It's an abstraction. You're yeah. talking about like a really visceral aha kind of a moment. Everything falls together, click, and, and suddenly the person is relating as a human being. Yeah, th that's right. That's is that what you do with, the, with these actors? Well, it's, How do you it's, do that? It's what you try to do. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's really no substitute for trial and error and experience. So, but I, I think you can't, you can't underestimate the importance of good writing. The, the writer has to have a sense of it. Mm -hmm. And then it's the actor's job to know, well, this is mostly about how cool it is in the room, and even though the two of them are talking about the end of a relationship, if the actor focuses on the fact that it's 58 degrees and the writers put that in, that can feed the actor as, in terms of it's cold in this room and so is the relationship. Good writers will do that. So it's not just the motivation that sometimes you have to figure out, it's what's the strongest reality for this character? And then you begin to know a little bit more about what, what to do. Mm -hmm. And that, that happens really brilliantly in comedy too. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that for another discussion. I'm still struggling with this yes. because um, you're talking about something that isn't real. You're talking about something that's made up, that's make-believe. Yeah. Like the, the, the addition of that piece of information is 58 yeah. degrees in the room yeah. and how's that going to affect how I, I interact with you if we were characters in a scene. So are you but, asking me to define what reality is? I don't know, but it's not reality. I mean, aren't actors sometimes called uh, pathological liars that get paid? Uh, yeah, but I don't think that's a good description. I know it's yes, not, but yes, it's said. Well, to it's, to it's believe a, in the reality of the moment. Yes. I mean, that's, so unless, unless people who do that, I'm sure it's just yes. like, well, I'm believing in the reality of the moment, but for me, I struggle with that idea. Well, here's, here's where I would go. With I mean, this is real to me, yes. but if I had to be... I don't know, selling ice cream, you know, yeah. in, 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 in Milwaukee suddenly as a character. Right. Maybe you could direct me through that. Well, okay, I will I will try. <laughs> actually I was thinking about that yes. in this kind of in this part of at some point we might actually you might kind of demonstrate or might critique me. Here okay. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying I'm trying to do something, I'm telling some story, interact okay. with you in some manner. I, sure, sure, sure. Well, a, but just I want to go back to your question about do. reality. I mean the, I, I think that the 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 fascinating thing about theater and film is that it's it's like a dream. It's condensed time. It's heightened reality. That's what dreams are like. So if we live on the reality, what you know, what our dreams make us do, that's an incredibly strong reality. Mm -hmm. It affects us a lot. Mm -hmm. So how we can change our point of view of the day based on what kind of night we had in our dreaming. So. That's our imagination working with reality and our psyche and all. I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert at that kind of thing, but that's what storytelling is, brings to a crystallization of the experience. So, which which is reality? Is it heightened reality that's reality? Is it 
regular selling ice cream in Milwaukee? Is that what's, you know, they're all realities, but the human experience is the reality that we live with most every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you had me thinking about dreams, dreams of yes. contrary, and actually the healing element of dreams, and yeah. we giving ourselves, telling ourselves a story, like in a REM, in a REM space, mm -hmm. you know, giving ourselves an experience of great fear, maybe it's the dream of contrary, we're processing out some kind of negative emotions that we never fully processed out. And yeah. I, I, am I using terminology that relates also to the, to the craft of acting? Well, I, I, think, I think yes and no. And acting, you have to make sure you don't get too carried away and let it become something that's too mystic. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, there's times where you have to, it, it is a profession. Mm -hmm. And um, for instance, sometimes I've had actors who have backgrounds in science or engineering or something. They make very good actors. Athletes can make very good actors because they learn how to concentrate. They learn how to compete and mm -hmm. stay in it. You mm -hmm. know, when, when it's three and, and two, perform. when there's a man on third. And perform? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And know what needs to be done and, and stick. Mm -hmm. Sort of a good athlete stays within themselves at the same time responds to the moment. Mm -hmm. So you, it, I think this is why it's so wonderful to teach it, is mm -hmm. you can come at it, you know, and sometimes you have to say, well, wait a minute, how would Lucille Ball do this? And you just imitate her, and that works. And so sometimes it's really simple, and sometimes yes, you can you can really hamlet yourself into quite a, a you know a, a flurry, if you will. I mean, what does your acting class look like? In other words, what 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 would we see if we were in your acting class at this moment? Okay, uh, uh, I I think that there's three things that you might witness. We usually do things together as a group because. Yeah, that's where the actor's training in terms of their instrument and getting a chance to swim in the creative waters. Because a lot of them are coming from the harshness of auditioning and, and the business of acting, and that's not an easy life. So we try to do that. Um, I ask my actors to choose scenes they want to work on. They usually have a very good sense of what they need to be doing and what they want to be doing. So we do a lot of scene work, and I will comment on those. And then the third thing is we do sometimes very specific exercises for a specific person, because then they can develop their craft in that particular area, maybe an improvement of their relationship to language, maybe objects, maybe another person, uh, sometimes improving their humor. So. Those kinds of things would, would, mm -hmm. would be what you would witness. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that you would detect, in other words, someone needs more comedic experience, so you'd kind of give them an, ex a, an exercise and pair them up in such a way that they have a chance to experience that. That's exactly, uh -huh. exactly. Sound like you've been in an acting class. Sounds like, yeah, yes, yes, yes. It sounds, that's, a, that's exactly. And, and, and that But does, that's great, because that's a great acting class when that takes place. Not oh, all acting good. classes are alike, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think also that evolves. Something that somebody had to work on a year ago, you have to then remind them, you can do that now. You don't have to keep doing that. We need to go to something else. And, and sometimes you have to just outright challenge them. And sometimes you have to say, look, this is how you get cast. I'd really like you to get better at this particular thing because you know the tricks. Can you do it so you're better than everybody else or almost everybody else at the thing they want you to do? Mm -hmm. So it, it, you have to change it with, with each actor. I would imagine, Larry, that you, you learn uh, what to suggest to someone based upon a, a long-term experience of them and a relationship with them as opposed to, you know, Joe who hears about, you know, this great acting class shows up one night and I'm sure your, your intuition is probably extraordinary because you're in this kind of a business, but on the other hand, to really know what Joe needs on a particular time, maybe on the short term you won't be able to kind of get through it, but yeah. you're talking about a, a, a longer term relationship, aren't you, yeah. with actors to know what they need? Well, to, to be a good teacher, you have to respond to both. I, I will confess there's more reward in, in the former of once the relationship's really gone on and then taking somebody maybe to levels where they haven't been able to go to before. That, that would come after a period of months, if not years, and, and mutual trust, and, and I guess just invention, too. So, yeah, you know, but the first, the, the intuition thing, you've got to go with that, mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes I don't have people for very long. They, I have to coach them in a movie, and I, I might not literally ever work with them again, so I've got to go with my first thing and what my gut tells me. Yeah. Would they find you to coach them in a movie role, or would say a, 
would would the casting director or the director or the producer would they know yeah. you and then make the referral? I'm going to tell you something that I probably shouldn't say okay. is that if the actor contacts me, that's a great thing. That means they want to sit down and do their work and be well prepared. If the producer is contacting me, that means that ultimately they don't really have confidence mm -hmm. in the casting mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they know there's a problem and maybe it was because mm -hmm. of contract the people mm -hmm. person they really wanted would have been good enough or mm -hmm. better they couldn't you know afford. what you remind me of actually when Al Pacino was 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 cast in The Godfather yeah they didn't they weren't going to stick with him they exactly. they did not like what they saw and it mm -hmm. wasn't until like Coppola kept insisting that he could do it. Was that Perhaps, the story? You know, I don't know the whole story, yeah. but anyway, they, they were not happy with him. They really had some very very strong doubts about his his ability to, to pull this thing off. But then I think it was when they were it was the scenes it, it was uh, uh, it was the kind of the, um, the the commentary part of the DVD. I, I remember maybe the oh. Coppola was talking about it. It was the scene in which he is protecting his father who's in the hospital yeah. from from the from the the assassins and the cops and everybody awesome. else yeah. and they saw something emerge in him which is what they were hoping to find all along there it was no, he was becoming the godfather you know, i love those yeah. movies i'm going but i've never done it listen to the dvd commentary i think i'm going to do that yeah and I, I believe that's where i where i heard that said um, that's a great isn't story. it amazing though how we were talking you're talking earlier about the, the, the telling of stories yeah and I don't know why, you know, why I would put on the God, Godfather for the 50th time or the 100th time. Why would I keep going back to see that story? Why would I keep going back to that? And, and, but aren't we really all part of this, kind of this, this, this uber cultural thing that's going on that we don't even know what it is or why we, do you know what I'm saying? I think it's really beyond our ability to really comprehend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It could be seen as, I suppose, as a weakness or a compulsion on the one hand, but it gives me great pleasure to reconnect with certain characters or roles or situations. Yes. What is that? I, 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 you know, it I, feels I right I when it's you. happening, but... Yeah, it, it does. I, I think we see something that we know exists in ourselves and we don't have the, I mean, the opportunity to express it. I, 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 the Sopranos was another thing that everyone was fascinated with, these monsters, but the elements of family. And, yeah. And, and now, and now it's Jersey, Jersey, Jersey Shore, of course. I don't watch that. You don't watch that? Well, I do, actually. <laughs> do you? I do. I've never had the pleasure. I'm not, so, I'm not so sure that it's going to work in, in, in Italy, but uh, it's, you know. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. You know, Larry, you know, what about the predatorial acting teachers of the world? You know, the theater can be a dirty business, and there are some, uh, you know, some, some teachers who might cajole, you know, an unsuspecting student to sign up for years of classes under the guise of, you know, making sure they're ready before turning them loose on a colossal failure in the world of auditions and casting. You know, what, what about that? Yeah, that's... that's uh that's a part of my business, I have to say, that, that worries me. I, I suppose, uh, to be fair, there's all kinds of different fields where there are people who take advantage of other people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in, my, in my studio, people basically sign up for a class a month at a time so that if they're not happy, they can, they can leave, and, and if it's not the right class for them, they can, they can stop what they're doing, and that's okay. But uh, yeah, I think, I think uh, unfortunately, actors are frequently taken advantage of because they're so needy. They, they, they want to know that they're liked. They want to know that they're loved. And, and sometimes uh, a person who is conniving enough can take advantage of that. So that, that can be a problem sometimes, no question. Larry, um, I think you touched on this before, but do you think that anyone has the ability to become an actor or as it, uh, in Animal Farm, you know, some animals are more equal than others. Yeah. You did touch on that, but do you really feel that any person could go out and become a, a working actor, regardless of their type or vocalizing ability yeah. or, or their shyness or their openness? Or Do you really think they could? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't. I, I think there's many people who can. I think the part of the issue is you have to want it a great deal because it's such a difficult field. and. So there has okay, to be Okay, but that say, say you have it's just the average yeah. any old person who wants it. Yeah. Who wants it badly. Yeah. I, I, I is it is it is it within within reach? Is it possible? I I, I, I guess I have to be truthful. I, I want to say yes, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, I think there are some people that for whatever reason it's it's not meant to be this time, you know. And uh, uh, 
I, and, and also people change so much. I, I did have an experience where once there was somebody I really did not think should be doing this and they went away and when they came back and they ended up being one of the best actors I've ever trained. So you never You know, know. I'm glad you said that, Larry, because I was going to take issue with that. Because in, uh -huh. in, my, in my earlier incarnation as a talent manager, yeah. there would be people who would come in who begged to be signed, you know, and they weren't the right type. I knew that I couldn't yeah. make money from them immediately. Or they just really, they just didn't really fall into any particular category as a look or a type. So uh, my advice to them would always be just go out there and stay, get find an audience and stay in front of an audience. It's kind of like the Beatles in, in, in Germany when they were, they, were, yes. they were playing music, you know, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And they become masterful communicators. They became the best that, that they could possibly, great communicators. Well, the truth is that some of these people that would always send me a postcard, they're in another off, 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 off Broadway show, and I, you know, I, I, I would sometimes I'd come and see them, sometimes not. But years later, sometimes ten years later, I'm going to echo exactly what you said. They're 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 premiering a role on Broadway, and there was no reason for it. They didn't have the looks, they didn't have the voice, they didn't have anything for it. But they just had nothing more than the desire to do it, mm -hmm. and they became great communicators by staying in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. So, I know, <laughs> and I don't know why. It's it's very <laughs> tough. I you know maybe I, it's I when they're paying you money and you're saying how how fast is this going to the turnaround time on yeah. this activity? This person's putting money uh, is paying for classes, and I can't guarantee this person's ever going to be able to land a role or do anything. Yeah. that's going to real. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of an integrity issue, I, I would imagine it's going to have a yeah yeah and then, take a hit. And there's and there's times where maybe I have to ask someone to study a more you know, a beginning kind of approach to things, and then, and then something can develop. So, yeah, you know, I would agree with that. Yeah, Larry, Larry, what about great writing that, uh, the great writing that underlies great acting? You know, is it getting written, mm. or would you say that, uh, would you agree with the generally held belief that, uh, you know, we're destined to do revivals mm. Because uh, there's no, there's very little good writing happening for the theater anywhere. I understand. Yeah, I, I do have hope. Um, I, I happen to believe, like for instance, uh, Tony Kushner, is a a wonderful, wonderful writer, and he is setting uh, the bar very high. And I think he does offer new ideas and and perspectives that that come up. And and I think there are some good playwrights. I, I think that the pragmatic issue is that, unfortunately, really good writers can't always make money in the theater, so they have to write screenplays. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's like something else is that uh, the Very good true. writers have, you know, are going to go where money is offered to them. And there are great playwrights who have to take second jobs, even when they're produced. It's, it becomes a very challenging issue, you know. So. So we have to have the environment where good writers are nurtured, and there's only a few you can keep giving grants to, so that they don't, so they can keep writing this material. So. Of course, they don't even need grants anymore because they've got they've got movie cameras in their telephones. There we go. <laughs> so maybe that's, that, right. that's right. It's a whole that's crowd right. coming up, that's right? right. The next, that's right. They the next can put something on their own webcam and put it on on YouTube. And I don't know. That's true. It's, it's a whole true. it's a whole new world. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Uh, well, I want to thank you for, for having me here. I, I found this really, really stimulating. I, we've covered everything so well. I, I honestly don't. I mean, I'd like to say I, I, maybe you can encourage people to look at my website and uh, everything else. I was just going to mention good. that. Oh, thank Larry, you. Thank you, thank you thank so much you for coming. Thank you so much, Phil. I've really had a wonderful time. Yeah. Good. We have been speaking with Larry Singer of Larry Singer Acting Studios. If you would like to learn more about his work, please visit LarrySingerStudios.com. If you have any questions or comments, or you'd like to be on our program, please write me at bttelevision at gmail.com. For my guest, Larry Singer, and for myself, W.J. O'Reilly, be well, and see you next time.